Tom here from Lawrence Systems and Unify in mid-2023 with the version 7.4 of their network application controller made changes to the way you set port profiles and VLANs by adding an option called traffic restrictions and removing what used to be the all network, which was essentially a trunk port. Now here is November of 2023, and we're gonna be using Unify version 7.5.187, the latest available right now. And we're gonna show you how to set those traffic restrictions up and what happens when you don't set them up properly, which is essentially you will allow VLAN hopping because without the traffic restrictions and just setting the VLAN to the port, the other VLANs will still pass through the port. And that's an important distinction to know because you don't wanna set these things up insecurely. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I wanna cover is when to and when not to use these traffic restrictions. By default, when you get a brand new out of the box, then adopt it, Unify Switch, get all the firmware up to date, it's going to have the default no traffic restrictions, which is what you want for starting out. When you have it coming into your firewall, in my example here, I'm using PFSense, but this will substitute for whichever firewall you're using that can pass VLAN traffic, or even if you're using one of the Unify ones, when you come out of one of the LAN ports with the VLAN tags attached to it, in this case, it's this particular port I've just labeled IGC2 in my PFSense, you want that port that is uplinking to the first switch to have it set to no traffic restrictions if you want all of the VLANs that are defined both in the firewall and also defined inside the Unify system to pass. Of note, Unify in the past, long ago, used to pass all VLANs even if they weren't defined. They've actually changed this, and unless they've changed it back, to my knowledge, they will only pass defined VLANs. So if you define them within your firewall, you will always have to define them again into the switch to get them to pass along to the next port. If you're using a Unify firewall, it's going to define them at the same time, so it's not as big of a deal. Next thing is when you're connecting any two switches together, the ports between those switches should be set to all. If they're Unify switches, this is going to be the default. And the reason why is that way when the VLANs that are defined in your firewall are passed along to the first switch, and if you have another switch down the line and you would like all those VLANs to go, no traffic restrictions between them should exist. Now, if you want to restrict traffic, we'll be talking about that, where you may not want those to go to another switch. Usually not the case. Usually all of your switches you want the same, and you do it at the port level of each switch. Now, the final note would be if you're going to a non-Unify switch, same answer again. Let's say you're going from a Unify switch to a Cisco switch. The Cisco switch you'll want to set to trunk port all coming into the Cisco and inside of the Unify, you'll do the same thing, no traffic restrictions. And the same thing goes for access points. The restrictions on the access points, you can think of these a little bit differently because by default, yes, it'll work fine if you send all of them, but maybe you want to restrict what goes out to your SSIDs because maybe there's some that you'll never send out there. So you could say to be more locked down, you may wanna only send the traffic to the different access points that will actually be used by the access points. But if you leave them at all, they will definitely work. It's always good to start it all and then work backwards once you know you have a working config and restrict the things you're not using. So I'll make that as a side note, it's up to you, but the default port settings will work. But now let's talk about when to use traffic restrictions and where it's really important. And we're going to get to the demo to show you exactly where these settings are, but I want to point out in this scenario here, if we have a computer, a camera, any device attached to a specific port, this is definitely where you want to use traffic restrictions because the goal would be to set that port to the VLAN only that you want it to access. And we can use the camera as an example, or maybe you want to have a camera LAN and this VLAN with the cameras is going to be restricted to only the things you want it to talk to. You don't want the traffic restrictions turned off on that because then someone could actually plug into that port. And even though it would be default sending the camera network, it's actually still sending all of them if you don't set the traffic restrictions. Now let's show you how this works by setting this up directly in the port manager inside of Unify. We're gonna click on my USW24POE. We're gonna to go to the port manager. And as I said in the demo, we're gonna be demoing this with port number 14. By default, I just have it labeled as port testing VLAN, I have it set to default. One thing I really wanna note here, especially if it's hard to see, is the little scroll bar right here. I don't know why they made this scroll is hard and thin as they did to grab, but I will note this has caused confusion where people can't see the traffic restrictions because when you click it, 
it drops down below and you have this and it becomes a little bit hard to see. I just want to make sure that's clear that if you don't think you have it, just scroll up and down and you'll look for this little bar right here. Now the traffic restrictions on there are turned off because we have it at default. Let's say we wanted it to be Camlan 60, that's my camera network. So if we set it here, but don't put any traffic restrictions, this will actually not just switch it so the default is 60, but still send all of the other traffic. The way we stop this from happening is we can say block and select block all. We wanna know what networks we're blocking or do we wanna allow and only allow certain networks. And you can hit allow and leave it blank. And it'll actually work this way where you don't select anything and you're only allowing nothing. So block all the networks and they do have a block all option right here. And we hit apply. It's the more logical way to do this. And when we do this, now we've restricted that port to exactly what we want it to do. Now, this is my demo computer. I have it plugged into this. It just refreshes with a local address when the address changes here. So 192.168.60.102.60 is my camera network. So this is definitely on my camera network like we'd expect it to be. And if I try to select another network, let's say I tried to VLAN hop to my 777 management network by choosing this. We go here and we see it just says local address 127001 because I've told it, no, you can't get any other VLANs. But let's go ahead and test what happens when we turn off traffic restrictions. We'll go back over here to port 14. We're just gonna uncheck the box for traffic restrictions. We're gonna hit apply, give it a second to refresh the switch. And now the system is able to actually VLAN hop and grab my management network, which is at 10.77.77.1. And that is simply because I turned the traffic restrictions off. Now we can actually take and build this out slightly differently by saying, let's go ahead and choose CAMLAN 60 but do traffic restrictions to allow, and we'll be implicit here, and we're just going to allow one more network on here. So we have this Tom's management VLAN. We don't want the management VLAN on there, but what if we wanted the 337 network on there? So we said, we're gonna send this as the default, but then we also gonna add this traffic. So we're gonna head and apply these changes. And now you see the system can get a local address of 192.168.13.100 because that is what the VLAN is for that. But if we go ahead and go back to the normal network, it'll go back to the CAMLAN network by default. So let's try to VLAN hop though over to our management network. And we can see that it fails. This is why it's so important that if you want any particular device to only get access to the network that you segment to, such in this case as the CAM network, we want to make sure traffic restrictions are on, block, and just choose block all, apply the changes. Making sure you have block all on is going to be critical in making sure the only network that's accessible on that port is the network that you have chose as the primary network. Now, one more thing worth noting is that you can change the default network name even if you don't have a unified firewall. This used to be an editable field. It's no longer allowed to be edit in the new UI, but you can edit it in the old UI. So if you switch back to the old UI, you can change the name of your default network if you want to. I bring it up because you may have noticed some of mine are changed that you've seen in videos. I used to be able to change them. Now I can only change them in the old UI. Just something worth noting. Like and subscribe if you want to see some more content from the channel. Also, head over to my forums if you want the script that I use to display the colorful IP address. I thought it was just kind of novel, something I was playing with. But hey, I'll leave a link to that down in the forums where you can just copy and paste that code. It's just kind of a novel little bash script that was in my Debian VM for this demo. If you want to connect with me on the socials, head over to lawrencesystems.com. You can connect with whatever socials you find me there. And thank you.